In 2022, I became a software engineer. It was my dream job. I was working at a really big company in London. I'd finally reached my goal and everyone thought that I was successful. But then something changed. I realized that a lot of things about this job were not what I had been expecting. Sure, while this job was much better than any other job I had worked, I had a lot more freedom, I noticed that it was still very difficult for me to get ahead. Cost of living had risen dramatically in the past few years, and even at this very good company, my salary was barely enough to even save after all of my expenses. So I actually ended up quitting that job after just a couple of months of working it. And if I was starting over today, I would not become a software engineer, at least not in the same way as we all think that becoming a software engineer is about. I would do something very, very different that still requires me to learn to code, that still requires me to have all of the same skills, but just pivot my strategy a little bit, which is what I have now been doing for the past couple of years to make a lot more money and get ahead a lot faster while living my dream life around the world. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you why learning the code and becoming a software engineer while working for a big company is no longer the best thing for you to do, exactly what you should do instead, and also how I myself escaped the system. And by using pretty much the same skill set, I'm able to build 10x more wealth and live a life that is 10x more free than the life I had before. But before I tell you about the new path and what I'm doing right now, I need to tell you about the old path of software engineering. So essentially the whole idea of all the 2010s, 2020s, and pretty much for the past 50 years or something like that has been that you should, number one, go to college, get a degree in computer science, in software engineering. And after that, now that you have this piece of paper, this degree, you need to grind and learn to pass interviews at big tech companies like Google, Meta, Amazon, companies like this, and they have a very standardized process. All you need to do is grind some lead code and you are going to be able to pass these interviews eventually if you are good enough. And then you're just gonna get a really good job that pays you extremely well. And that if you're not stupid with your money, it's gonna allow you to save a lot of money and get ahead. And then you can retire early if you want to, or just go on to become super rich, like a lot of media engineers or something like that with all the stock bonuses you get and everything like that. So first of all, that is still absolutely possible. Like the whole idea of like, oh, this software engineering is dead. You should not learn to code anymore. It's not worth it to work at Google. Like all of that is exaggerated. It's still absolutely worth it to do that. Pretty over like 90% of careers that you could get into, 90% of things you could do, but that doesn't mean it's the best way anymore. It used to be the best way to get ahead. Now you can still use it to get ahead, but it's just gonna be much more difficult. It's gonna take longer and it's gonna be just much more difficult for you to break into a lot of these companies because of a lot of the things that have been happening in the economy. There's a lot less jobs available and a lot more people learning to code because everyone thinks, well, this is the golden opportunity. I should learn to code. So you have a lot more competition, a lot less jobs available. So obviously it's gonna be more difficult to get in. And these companies no longer have to offer the same kinds of insane pay packages that they had to in the past because the supply demand dynamics are simply more in these companies' favor today. That is simply the reality. And on top of this, College and university costs are sky high, especially in the US. Now, obviously this depends on the country where you're in, but even in the UK where I went to university, I had to go more than 30,000 pounds in debt just to get this degree. While a pay is down, it's more difficult to get these jobs, cost of living is also up by a lot. Inflation has been sky high. And yes, in reality, the inflation is even higher than what they report in these numbers because they kind of pick and choose what they include in these inflation indices and things like that to make the inflation look a lot less than it actually is. And a lot of people are feeling the squeeze. And for a lot of people, some things like home ownership are completely out of reach because house prices are so insane. So what can you do instead? Now, luckily, if you have been learning the code to become a software engineer, this part is still gonna require you to learn the code. And learning the code is still, I believe, the best way to get ahead in the world. Like I mentioned, you kind of just need to change your strategy on how you're using these coding skills to make money and get ahead. So really this new opportunity is all about becoming what I call an independent software engineer. 
So what do I mean by an independent software engineer? Well, really, instead of you going out there, trying to interview for companies and working for companies, letting them pay you the market rate salary, what you want to do is learn the skills of software engineering. So you still have to be a competent software engineer. There is no getting around this part. But instead of working for companies who then are paid by the clients of these companies or who make their own product, what you can do is go directly to the people who have problems that need software engineering skills to solve these problems. So you essentially bypass these companies and you get work as a freelancer or a contractor directly from these companies. Or you can go out there and use your software engineering skills to build your own products to solve some real world problems using code. Again, instead of going to a company that is solving these problems, you're solving these problems directly. That is the whole idea. So let me just give you a real structured process on first of all, how I would go about this and also why this is so much better than the old path. First of all, instead of going to college, you can learn to code online. You can do it for completely free on YouTube. There's so many resources out there right now, or you can literally just talk to AI, like use ChatGPT as your teacher. Like I've literally used it to teach me so many things even to this day as a professional software developer, or obviously if you want even faster progress, you can get a paid program online, which is going to be a fraction of the cost compared to a university degree. I have one of these programs. It's going to teach you everything that you need to know to become a professional software engineer. And it's taught by someone who has actually done it, who actually became a software engineer first in a company and now working on my own startup, which is actually making real money instead of some dusty old professor who's never actually done this for real. So that's going to be in the first link down in the description if you are interested, but it's by no means necessary. Second step build projects that showcase your skills and give you a lot of practice. There's only so much you can learn by just looking at the course, even if it's my course, as amazing as it is. It's only so much you can learn by just looking at the course. Even if you go through, through my program, I'm gonna tell you all along. Now, go and build this project now, now build this project. Build a ton of projects to actually ingrain this stuff into your brain and actually become a real world software developer. So I hope that you understand that no matter which path you choose as a software developer in 2025, you cannot get anywhere without building projects. And to build projects, I recommend this. Choose one tech stack and master that stack by building every project you build using that stack. And for your stack, you can choose any programming language and any framework that you want. But a key thing that you will need for any project is hosting and deployment. And hosting and deploying your projects can seem overwhelming from servers to databases to CI CD pipelines to DNS records. It quickly gets very complicated. And many developers find themselves spending more time on configuration than actually coding, which is not what we want to do. That's why I want to introduce you to today's sponsor, Zavala. Zavala is built to take away all that complexity and let you go from idea to live app in minutes. You can deploy apps in just a few clicks. No messing with servers or endless configs. It comes with databases, authentication, file storage, and APIs already integrated. You don't need to glue together 10 different services because everything is in one place. And most importantly, it scales with you. So you can start small as a beginner, but the same platform can handle production level traffic if your project takes off. So you get user friendliness while having everything built on very robust infrastructure. What I really like about Zavala is that it's kind of like a developer's playground. You can test ideas fast, deploy instantly, and focus your time on building, not managing infrastructure. So if you're serious about building projects as fast as possible, Zavala is the kind of platform that saves you weeks of setup and allows you to actually ship projects. You can try it out for free from the first link down below in the description and get $50 for free in credits if you use my link. Now back to the video. Then after that, you can choose. Are you going to become a freelancer where you're essentially still a software developer working for another company, except you're just working for the company directly rather than being employed by a company. Or if you want to build your own products, which I have now done, my startup has now made almost $100,000 in the past, like less than six months. So on track to make like way more than what most software engineers like 
five times what my software engineering salary ever was. Now out of these, for most people, freelancing is going to be the easier path. And why might you want to become a freelancer versus just working a job? Well, first of all, you get paid a lot more because you're getting paid directly for the value that you provide. When you're employed by the company, the company wants to pay you as little as possible. And they know that they have hundreds and hundreds of other people that want to work for them. But if you have the skills to solve a problem directly for some company who needs a website or needs someone to fix some security holes in their application or create designs, and you have those skills, like these companies, they have a lot of money. Like just us, for example, like to give you a practical example, just this week, we paid $6,000 for a freelance designer to create professional designs for our startup. It took this designer less than a week to complete this job and we paid them $6,000. Now, obviously the downside is that it's gonna take you more time to build out the portfolio. You have to reach out and like find clients, especially those first ones are gonna be more difficult. Obviously no one's saying that this is gonna be easy, but also if you were trying to get a job, you would also have to spend months and months preparing for interviews, getting rejected, especially in this market. So on the other side, you could then build your own product, which is what I am doing and this has the highest income potential because now instead of using your time and your skills to solve problems for other companies you are creating your own solution your own package solution to some problem that exists now this is not for the faint-hearted it's very very difficult to find a problem that is worth solving and then actually being able to solve it my first startup that i worked on for more than six months completely failed so six months of work for zero dollars in the revenue now the second one now is finally working and is right now making between 10 to twenty thousand dollars a month and now that the product is mostly built obviously we're constantly improving it my life is kind of easy like i work maybe two hours a day on average now this required like two years of trying and failing to find this problem but once you do that you can get to a point where you can really get ahead quickly and you don't necessarily have to work that hard you just have to put that work in the beginning beforehand so this alone is gonna make you a lot more money that you could ever make working for a company and the ceiling is much higher i mean the ceiling is pretty much limitless but to really benefit from this you also want to do step four which is to move to a lower cost of living country this is exactly what i would do right now if i was starting over as soon as i'm making any money from either freelancing online or or my own app or something like that i would just move to literally vietnam or thailand where i'm actually right now where i can live an amazing quality of life for eight thousand dollars a month or two thousand dollars a month and at that point i don't even have to sacrifice on my lifestyle like i'm living an amazing life while building stuff online on my laptop and people just don't realize that this is possible because people cling on to the idea that the only way to live a high quality of life is to live in canada or the us or the uk or something like that so i would at least consider a lot of other countries in the world where you can get much more for much less and this is how you can essentially increase your income so you make a lot more money especially once you start succeeding which of course is going to take time and also at the same time reduce your costs and also reduce your taxes legally because a lot of these countries where i've been spending a time over the past couple of years are also much more tax friendly than these western countries sure you can still try to apply for jobs and try to get a job as kind of a plan b or something that you do in the meantime while you figure out your freelancing portfolio or your apps or something like that but really if i was starting over i would really consider going through this new path than the old path it's going to be so much easier and so much faster for you to get ahead and really build an amazing life